Top 28, Dubai at night, live, 1.5 Media, Allied for Future Innovators Magazine. My longtime good friend and helper, and you, uh, we've seen each other in a lot of things, Future I.O. Institute, the Resilience Frontiers, UNF, Triple C, many other things. You're doing a lot of things, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to try to tackle that. I want you to introduce yourself. Tell us about your company, what you're doing here. Why are you a cop? Uh, yeah, my name is Dr. Avir Haddad. I'm the founder and director of the Institute for Legal Transformation. And basically, this is why I'm here, because we tackle the law of the future. And when it comes to climate change, we promote a methodology on how to encode indigenous values and indigenous knowledge into the modern law. The last time we saw each other was at the just right after the Dubai Future Forum, I believe, or maybe, maybe no, it was at the World Government Summit. World Government Summit. I spoke Sorry. there. Yeah, yeah. The World Government Summit. Yeah, right. You spoke there. I spoke yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Both spoke there. Um, but you've also done the Dubai Future Forum. I did it as well this year and because you are doing a lot for the future. Yeah. And so you told us your name and what your uh, company does and things. But can you go in just a little bit deeper? Give us a little bit more. Why is it needed that we think about legal ease and the values and indigenous for the future? Yeah, I mean, the topic future is quite important for me because I call myself a legal futurist. So we try to develop methodologies to create the law for the future we want to live in. So for that, uh, when it comes to climate change, when it comes to technology, exponential technologies especially, governments and cities and societies will need to adapt. And this needs always a regulation. And, uh, the regulatory authorities and the legal mindset is one too slow a little bit to keep up with these technologies and with this adaptation or the adaptation needed. And for this, we try to support or we do support government, cities, and legal institutions in their way of adaptation, becoming more agile and becoming more resilient to those changes. I have a question for you yeah. for that, that's kind of in this guy. So a lot in my work as a futurist as well, and my in my work at the EU taxonomy and the governance uh, structures, I will say, boy, wouldn't it be nice to have policy and regulation that was living, that kept pace every single year? Because take, for example, the EU taxonomy. By the time that rolled out, no matter how fabulous it is, it was already like five to seven years outdated, not for a lot of different reasons, let's put it this way. <laughs> uh, one, because, because of the pandemic, because yeah. of Brexit, but also politicians, delegates, lawyers, and many people had to first discuss, debate, and deliberate, to look at all the, the wording and get it just right. So by the time it comes out, it's already almost in the past. It's already outdated. Do you foresee things in the future that might, with with technology or other other ways that you've thought of or talked about, that would keep pace with with the evolution of our world? Absolutely. What you tackling is the process of the the lawmaking process is way too slow for the rapid change we're facing right now when it comes to technology or climate change and the adaptation of the society to these new technologies or the needed adaptation of the society to the climate change needs also a much faster regulatory approach. Uh, and this is exactly what we tell killing. So not only changing the mindsets in the legal field, in the regulatory authorities with training, with workshops, with, uh, with research, but also providing um, technological tools which could help um, improving this process much, much faster. That is amazing. It is exactly what we need. And, and I know, I mean, we could talk hours about all these things at uh, Eom and Dubai and uh, Qatar or who, whoever else, the Middle East and, there's, and, and Jordan and, and on and on. There's so many countries and places that need a lot of help. I know you're there. You're only one person, but you're hopefully duplicating yourself and, and replicating yourself in some respects. We're here at the COP in this beautiful backdrop. And said, <laughs> we're asking um, a couple questions. A COP half full. 
the optimistic perspective, what is your cop half full now that you've had some intakes and feelings and seen the cop and met friends and met some other people? <laughs> yeah, I met old friends. This is how it is at the cop, right? You meet old friends, but you meet also new people. And what I like especially about this cop is the huge presence of indigenous people, I have to say, and this big effort put in in promoting them and we just had a session also with the uh, on legal transformation and uh, the indigenous values and how we translate them into law so this is something i highly highly appreciate the second and last and probably hardest question but i know you you've got the answer <laughs> let's the, see <laughs> the future legal answer I hope. what does a world that works for everyone look like for you it's a hard one. It is a hard one. It is such a hard one. And I need to ask it from a legal, legal oh, feature. you don't have to. I was just wondering if you would answer from a legal respect. I mean, it can be your, your motherly. I know you're a mother, and it could be your motherly answer. Um, it doesn't need to be a legal answer. It's really, uh, I really want to know not what policy, what your president or your, your government or your priest or your husband or even your family would want the answer. What does a world that works for everyone really look like for you? Uh, for me, a word with, which would work for everyone look, look okay. A world which works for everyone looks for me in the way that we change money with energy, with human energy. I want to add to a law and we're quite crazy. Because in that case, I would be pretty wealthy. I have so much energy. I could trade my energy. And I think this is, we, many people lost this. Many people lost their uh, sense of being human, their sense of connection to with earth, with nature. And they're like just kind of, Oh, living, living a senseless, oh, I don't want to say that, but many. So I feel like we need to go back to our energy, to being human again. We have these amazing technologies taking a lot of burden off our shoulders. So let's go back to being human, raise our energy. And this could be something like you, we exchange instead of money. <laughs> I love that. You would be. You'd be I was so wealthy. A trillion. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this would be good that, for me. <laughs> that's a lot of energy. Um, and I love that answer. That is, uh, I've never had that answer. And that is so beautiful. Thank you so much. To, You're welcome. Thank you. for letting us all inside of your ideas and doing the things you are doing for the future. Your hope and inspiration for us all. 1.5 Media Allied for Futures live here. COP28 Dubai, beautiful setting. At